Strategic planning meeting held on October 28, 2020, be adopted as presented. Second. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. No business from delegations. Business right from meeting. Minutes, sorry. The council has seen file the chief. CAO's status report as presented. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of items to speak to bring council up to date on a couple of items. Um, we have submitted uh, on uh, page 11 of the agenda, first item there, the 2020 flood response box. Uh, those claims have been uh, submitted to the province. We have uh, Remember, my number, Greg Christina, spent a little over seventy thousand dollars yet to come back from the province. Um, number three on that same page uh, by airport fencing, which I see now should be number two. Uh, staff are confirming if an application is required, if it's not required. Um, Sorry, which one was that? On page 11, the last item where it says uh, airport fencing, oh, okay. staff confirming if an application is required, if not required. Um, the East Branch Canada Highway Bridge, uh, there's an, uh, some extra information on their uh, tables. It's in progress. Uh, we're working out how to do that, how best to follow up on what council wants to do. It seems that the city ministry of transportation in general wants to just survey off the part that we need, and it would then be those property would not be a lease or anything else with the uh, ministry of transportation infrastructure, it would be our property. Uh, and uh, as you see in the uh, additional information there, uh, Staff Bank is prepared to do that. And of course, they have a BC land surveyor on staff, and they can do it. And they are used to doing that kind of work for uh, with Ministry of Transportation. So I will be following up on that. Uh, at the top of page 13, the 2020 tax sale. Um, three have been fully redeemed, and one is working out a payment plan. Uh, Christina asked me to read out some uh, numbers. Uh, we currently have only $51 in delinquent property tax. That's taxes from 2018. Uh, in arrears, that's 2019 taxes. We have $12,592 outstanding. And in current, as in this year's property taxes, uh, we still have to collect $42,510. And again, from this year for utilities, uh, $31,828. So we have uh, well over $70,000 in collectibles just from this year. The total of all of those, including the delinquent and the rears, comes to $86,981. Uh, our intent to provide more, of it, more financial information and more information on these status reports other than just council business. Uh, there's a lot of times when we are responding to other agencies and uh, the development things, that sort of nature, that are not necessarily on a council agenda. So we're looking at growing these reports to be more inclusive. Um, and that was it for the additional information. And I'll just add to the um, page 14 of Block Watch. We are waiting for the new sergeant to come and he's yes. here. So I will touch base with him on it, but unfortunately we won't be able to have full community meeting. 
built. So it'll still be on hold, but at least we can get the process started. It'll be a whole new type of block watch too with, uh, with COVID. Well, that's not well no, we can't even start the program yeah. because yeah. the block watch program is community driven. Yeah. And we can't have an organizing meeting mm -hmm. because of COVID. Yeah. So, but we can get the, the wheels in progress. Any further discussion on the CAO status report? Thank you. All, right. All in favor? Okay. Well, Sorry, you... I missed the move right seconder on that. I know that. I was going to say, did you have a seconder? Because I don't think anyone seconded I it. I don't. <laughs> okay. Want the committee reports economic development of Councilor Peters and Councilor Cooper. I think this is like a very economic development, but I know it's uh, in our agenda package. But uh, certainly uh, the increased broadband and the um, the announcement from the Prime Minister that there's uh, a large sum of money that will go to uh, different areas of the, the country for developing their uh, increased broadband. And uh, we just wanted to let council know that the GNRD is already engaged with a company called Panic. And uh, it's worthy to, uh, to know that they will be approaching the municipalities on a, on a holistic level or everybody together. Uh, everybody in the CRD region to come up with a connectivity plan. So that's forthcoming. They issued a survey about a month ago to the different communities in the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, we're experiencing the same thing throughout the regional district. And, uh, so that's it's, it's in the works. Any further under economic development? Budget administrative services, Councilor Peters and Councilor Cooper. We put the, because it's a financial matter, we put the uh, community by law enforcement officer uh, uh, recommendation on the budget for administrative services. You'll see uh, just a standalone sheet with one item on it. Uh, yeah. item, yes. I'll move that council approve entering into a five-year intercommunity bylaw enforcement agreement and commit to fifty thousand dollars for twenty twenty-one and thirty thousand for each subsequent year. Second. Discussion. So, to remind everybody that we set those are like high end of budget. Um, we're having a meeting tomorrow where we'll have a little better idea on some closer numbers, but we budgeted high. Um, hopefully it won't be near, near those numbers. We just, this is the next step we need before we can go any further with the process, because if we don't have a commitment from the three communities, it's dead in the water. Okay. Has, has, has all the other uh, communities make the commitment yet? Yeah? We will be know all of that tomorrow. Um, Alan Brock will be discussing it tonight. tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, Clinton was supposed to do it last Wednesday. Talk to their CAO and apparent, uh, my recollection of that conversation is that uh, no, it was not taken to their council. Okay. Uh, so it's going to have to wait until uh, their next meeting. Ash Brock is doing at their meeting this evening. And uh, it's worthy to note that the uh, 400000 plus dollars that we're going to receive if we haven't already received it from the Rapid Start grant uh, can go towards uh, the bylaw enforcement startup and uh, expenses. Sorry. Uh, we have not received any firm criteria on that amount on that grant. What I've read seems to indicate to me, and I could be wrong, that this is just for additional costs related solely to COVID 19 
My law enforcement is COVID 19. Yes, so it does qualify. Part of their yeah. mandate. For anything over and above normal operating costs, they would pay for COVID 19. So that'll be covered in your our 50000 for this year, perhaps. 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 Well, we have not seen any current criteria to meet our goals so far. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, you know, hate to commit that amount of money just kind of coming out of the, the blue but bylaw officer is something that we've been looking at for a long long time and i think it will be more than worth the money that we put into it this is just to be prepared i think this was actually mentioned by councilor peters at an earlier meeting that this is not meant to be a revenue generator it's meant to bring people into compliance uh, uh, $50,000 expenditure up front and $30,000 thereafter. Uh, I agree with Councillor Gilbert. This is something that the community has been looking for for a long time. And I think it will be very well received. It will be a very worthwhile expense if we can come together. Any further? Just with a budget, it's, it's kind of um, our budget itself is quite uh, strained. But like you said, the, the, the community is is uh, wanting a bylaw officer. So I hope that we do get the rapid startup grant, and that will help us with the finances for this. Uh, just to, to clarify that on the, the restart grant, we actually did get approved for $461,000. Uh, and we're going to be transferring that money into our account uh, sometime this week or the late last week, very soon if we don't have it already. Uh, what we're waiting for now are the, the, the more detailed information about what's uh, about what's next. Uh, how we tried and how we reported and things like that. Yeah, okay, so that was 161,000? 461,000. 461,000. Any further? All same by law review? I'm sorry, all in favor? Here. All same by law review, Mayor, myself, and also Peter. I would move that the village of Cash Creek Procedure Bylaw number 818-2020 be given first reading as presented. Second. Discussion. Just on page 16 of our package, um, the notification places, the post office is not listed there. Okay. You're right. I don't know how I got here. Okay. And I would like to make a friendly amendment to my motion that it be um, the post office be added to the commission's notification places. Second. Discussion. All in favor. Okay. I'd like to move that the Village of Cash Creek Procedure Bylaw 818 2020 as amended be given second reading. Second. Discussion. Favor? Opposed? Opposed. Pardon me? I'm opposed. Uh, did, did you oppose the first reading? No, I didn't ask for the first reading. I would move that the Village of Cash Creek Procedure Bylaw number 818-2020 be given third reading as amended. Second. Discussion. All favor? Okay. Any opposed? opposed? Zoning amendment. I would like to move that we direct staff to amend bylaw 423 zoning to allow residential suites in C1 developments and to allow secondary suites in R1 zoning. Okay. Discussion. What? Why is this uh, coming up now? Coming up because I've just had a second inquiry from uh, the 
potential developer uh, in the downtown core uh, who wants to include residential with commercial. Uh, in our official community plan, that is one of the policies that they uh, recommend. Uh, it has never been uh, carried through into our zoning bylaw. Your OCP dictates how you set up your zoning bylaw. That amendment, there's never been an, an amendment to our zoning bylaw to reflect that policy. Uh, and the same holds true since we're talking about residential. I, uh, we've also had, uh, since I started, at least three different inquiries from people wondering if they could set up uh, a secondary suite, a in law suite. And I had to tell them that no, our uh, zoning bylaw did not didn't allow that as a permitted use, not in R1. So uh, that again is something that was in the official community plan, uh, and that's why I'm uh, recommending the council proceed with it. I don't mind the secondary suites. I just want to make sure that they're set up correctly and that they're people know they're there. So if there's an emergency, the ambulance knows you're there, so they have their own separate utilities, so that. You know, they're not just, uh, as in other cities, they've had house fires and all of a sudden they're pulling bodies out of places they didn't realize there were because there were so many suites involved in, in the house sort of thing. Those points are all well taken. And yeah, we will be conferring with uh, the TNRD, their building inspection department. A street addressing uh, service to uh, make sure that all secondary suites are identified uh, and that they're properly built. There will also be a provision that they must provide at least one off street parking space for any secondary suite. So that would be all covered under that uh, the building code, compliant with the building code on page 27 of the book? Yes. Well, not parking, not all, but I mean, the off street parking is not regulated by it's the building code, but it's just a standard practice that uh, any municipality that allows secondary suites, uh, they request that because they don't want streets getting clogged with uh, parking. Uh, there's several streets in the country already that uh, have a lot of parking on them, and they don't want that. Uh, Any further? All in favor? Public works and community facilities are felt that come through the phone. I would move that council approve closing the village office from December 24th to January 1st. Second. Discussion. Kind of early to be thinking of Christmas, isn't it? Because <laughs> I was like, I said, let it snow, let it snow. <laughs> let it snow. <laughs> Just giving us enough time to uh, close it so people have an option of it. And so we can get our uh, communication request in without using them up for Further discussion? All in favor? Carried. Village services and liaison. All in favor? Carried. Can, can we do that in camera if possible? It was an in camera meeting. Yes. So, yes, we can. Thank you. I have no other. I have no other. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I want to protect the services myself and council too. I have nothing to report. Um, I want to make a note that our fire department members are going through a training session on uh, 7th and 8th this past weekend, the 14th and 15th, which is I believe, this coming weekend. And uh, career hours uh, on both days. And uh, it's just to do with exterior operations. And I just want to note that they're doing this on volunteer time. There have been approached a number of times in the past week about our fire department being a paid fire department. It's not a paid fire department, it's a volunteer fire department. 
So a total of 30, uh, 32 hours of your own personal time and then exam time. And that's the commitment we're giving to our community just this past two weekends. So, uh, our thanks to them for endeavoring to get trained and, uh, bring us up to the standards that you know, the Justice Institute, Justice Institute wants. Uh, patient care tower, fall of 2022 on time and on budget until they realize they had some COVID-19 exposure and that may change, but uh, the last report is on time and on budget. Intergovernmental relations, this often comes with COVID. Um, the TNRB invasive plant program is wondering if the municipalities now want to be involved in their their program. They have done um, the areas for many years, but of course, weeds don't follow people's property lines. Um, I believe, yeah. Um, I think before though we enter, I would like to see them come to a meeting so we could ask some questions. If I may, that's what's on the agenda for our consideration. We're only they're only asking if there's sufficient interest for them to come to take the council. So that's what you'll see in the recommendation. Uh, the invite our each staff to attend future council meetings for them or just receiving files if they're not interested. So I would make that recommendation that we invite TNRD staff to attend and make their presentation. Second. Discussion? Kind of, kind of torn on this because although I really hate chemical sprays and I know that they're detrimental to our dogs and cats and birds and other things, I know that uh, the town has been inundated with these for the last uh, two or three years, and it's just getting worse. So, I think it was my backyard in the test area <laughs> <laughs> for more weeks. Oh, so, I'd like to uh, the program work. Yeah, so I'd like to at least have them here so we could talk to them about it. Here, any further discussion? Uh, Jamie presented at TNRD along with their others, uh, uh, the plant specialist, the yeah, staff. And uh, it was very informative, and the question of chemical sprays did come up. And he, uh, I'll let that answer come from him and um, what they use as uh, 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 ingredient. Goats? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but very informative, and uh, there's a lot of good points to their presentation that we can incorporate in our municipality. So, that's a great first step. And thank you for that. All in favor? Can I have one other thing? Yes. I'd like to recommend that we write a letter of congratulations to our MLA Jackie Taker for holding on to her seat and mm -hmm. leaving Fraser Nicola once more. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. I have no advisory committee, there's something called to do order and I didn't uh, attend, so if you could <laughs> inform us of what kind of started. Not a whole lot. There were three um, Belcourt staff members there and two members of the committee. Um, actually just one, Jack James, um, CAO Dalton and myself were there, but uh, we don't actually, as far as I know, have status on that today. Maybe you do, I don't. I believe I do, yeah. Um, so that was sort of disappointing that only two uh, two members of the committee were, were present. Um, they, uh, I left my report at home, which is why I'm kind of having an eye. Um, they're working on uh, getting um, contracts for the site, it's slow going. Um, they are hoping to come a little bit 
of your budget this year. Not by a whole lot, but something around twenty to thirty thousand. That's still better than other budgets. And uh, as far as the Campbell Hill uh, landfill goes, they're uh, still working on those, still digging. Um, they are not going to have the robust inspections that they had with the Cash Creek landfill to start off with anyway. They're going to be doing them every three months just because uh, they're not going to have uh, a lot of garbage being put in there right off the bat. And also because of COVID, uh, it uh, means that they have less people on site at any given time. So, as I say, it was uh, not a well attended meeting, so there wasn't a whole lot of uh, information, a uh, whole lot of discussion. Hopefully, next time. Thank you. Anything further on your answer? Information correspondence. Council receiving file the correspondence from the owner of your address. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Carried. Next is with the last of New business. Questions from the public, questions from the press. I would be don't have anything. We have a motion to move to a closed session. Seven. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Thank you.